What up guys, welcome to another video. Yes sir, today, really I have no idea what this is. Sorry about my microphone. Got my hoodie on today, so I don't know where to put it at. But I just got a package in. Let's see here. Ship to Keedron Franklin, lithium ion batteries. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, I'll just open this up real quick. Let's see here. Okay, 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 okay. We'll just put that down there like that. And in here. Okay. Whatever it is, it's a nice case in it. Very nice case. Oh, I think I know what this is. Okay. So right off the bat, this thing right here, oh, wow. It's the soon wheel. Check this out, guys. <clears throat> it's the soon wheel ST50. This is a four foot RGB light. Yes, and I'm gonna put the link in the description for this light. This is the very first time he opened it. I haven't touched it. Uh, so right off the back, just my thoughts. It comes with a nice case, soon well stitched right here. And then we got ST50 here, which you can put your, your card or whatever you want in this area here. Let's open it up. Oh, wow. Wow, wow, wow. Man. You get feet right here. You got these nice, CNC brackets to hold the light. Look at that. That is robust right there. Yes, oh yeah, for sure. That is robust. This is worth every bit of the money that I spent. And I spent $499 on this one tube. And I have another one coming. They give you all the hardware. You get an AC uh, block. You get another plate. You get a nice long cord, the AC power cord. And then you got the, the cord that goes onto the block. And then you have your literature here. It's a Sensei tube right here. We'll go through that after a while. And we have the Soonwell ST50 right here. Now, I did want the NAN light. Uh, I've used the NAN lights before but soon will reached out and so far dog i ain't gonna even sit here and hold you up man this is pretty nice oh you can flip that up lock it down there the battery should be in there uh oh yeah the battery should be in there kind of look like put some glue on that just the tape comes on there so we want to raise that up and lock it back down you got a dmx in and a dmx out Let's see if i can turn it on right out the box yep i can turn it right on the display looks really bright look at that my gosh man that display is bright so this is wireless or you can plug it in if you want to um if you need to use it for long periods of time, I would definitely plug it in. It's probably just like my Sunwell MT1. Let's go here. Yep, you can change, you can dim. Oh yeah, these, this is so in, intuitive. Look at this. You can change the Calvin. It goes all the way up to 20,000 K to 1600 K. Let's do this. Oh, hold on, I mean SSCT. I gotta go to the regular one. I don't know what Lee is. I'm about to look that up. Hmm. Yeah, memory, menu, CCT. Okay, 72%. We're gonna bring that down. You can change your, uh, your green, magenta. We're gonna bring that down to 4,400. And then we're going to put that at zero. 
and we're at 17% right now. Look at that. Wow, this tube is like four foot. So now I can light myself up from the back. I don't have to have another soft box. Oh yeah, that's gonna be dope, man. That is 17% right there. Look at that. Look, that is, it's pretty long. It's longer than my arm, for sure. All right, so let's get into this review. We need two of these. Let's get another one. What's going on guys, it's your boy Keidra Franklin with 924 Photography and we're back with another video. Upon receiving the Soonwell ST50 light tube and opening the box, I was super impressed with the carrying case. It has very nice stitching with the Soonwell on the exterior, along with a card holder that you could put your business card in. Looking inside the case, the light and the accessories were secured very well. This case can definitely be used for traveling, whether you're going through the airport or putting it in your car, is very heavy duty and made very well. Soonwell offers two versions of this light, the ST25, which is a two foot light and is 25 watts, and an ST50, which is four foot and 50 watts. So that means you have enough power in any situation inside for sure. Now what's inside the case? You get the mounting hardware to mount it on the floor or a light stand as shown in my examples right now in the B-roll. You also get a power cord to use this light with AC power, or you could just recharge the battery for wireless power. Also included is a power cable, so you can plug this up to AC, or you can use it wirelessly. The newly produced units only include one battery, whereas all the YouTube reviews I saw on YouTube before purchasing this light had two. And those were the older models that they had too. I think they were having problems with people pulling out battery. So if you release the side, you will get access to the battery tray. Just pull from the tab on the end of the battery to remove it from the unit and plug it in the outlet to charge the battery. The light itself is built with good quality and should last for a long time, much like the Sunwell MT1 which is a smaller version of this light. The light emits nice soft lighting that can be used for photography or videography. But in this video, we're gonna show you how to light paint with two of these lights using my Dodge Charger. Welcome to the car shoot. Now we have my 2019 Dodge Charger that's on air ride and has vertical doors on there, which is Lamborghini doors. I have Flow Series lights. We're gonna be using the Soonwell uh st50s which are the four foot twos 50 watts and i'm hopefully you've got through the review this far but now we're going to have some fun and light paint and if you haven't ever light painted basically what light painting is is recording light you're going to be shooting with a longer shutter speed you're going to bump your aperture up and then you're going to have your iso as low as possible and then you're going to put it on a timer if you don't have a remote control to switch it that's so the timer, so you're not touching the car, uh, camera, it got time to you know settle down or whatever it's doing. And then you take the shot, you record it, and then you take it back into Lightroom, and we're gonna stack the images and we're gonna layer them. So without further ado, let's get this B-roll started right now. Light painting is just recording light onto a blank canvas. So we are just going real slow, trying to get the whole car painted, and just to make sure it look good, but I want to keep my light high enough so I'll be able to just take this out because I recorded a base image without any of this stuff on here. And just to make sure that we have everything that we need. And then I light, I lit the ground up first just so I have that to work with. And now we're lighting the car. The object of this light paint right here is we want to make sure we stay away from the car and up high and just keep wandering around to light the whole car up to make sure we got everything that we need. And I'm gonna do the front just so I'm out of the frame so I can take this light out because this is gonna be layers and we're using the ST50 to light it. 
And we're just gonna go ahead and light the whole back end of the car. And I wanna be nice and out of the frame. So I'm just painting light on the foreground. Going into the car. These four foot lights cover a lot of space. So it's just like we're painting. So we're just gonna paint. I'm gonna light paint this grass. It's gonna be in the frame. This light here, all the way over here. It's gonna be in the frame. If I had my Segway, it should be a lot easier. the display screen. For indoor settings, the display is bright enough. However, in outdoor conditions, I had difficulty reading the display. Note that the display cannot be automatically rotated when turned horizontally. In order for you to, in order for the display to rotate right side up, you have to turn the light off and rotate the unit and then turn it back on and then you will see the soon wheel on the correct side. So if you wanted to put it on the opposite side, you need to turn it off, turn the power off, turn it back on, and the soon wheel will flip. I wish they had this function inside, make it a lot easier. Let's go into the functions of this light right now. We get the soon wheel AC power cord. Basically what happens when you put this power cord on, uh, once you plug it in and plug it into the wall, the power will come on automatically. So the light will come on automatically. It will not turn off. So that's one downside with the power cable. You can't just power it off. It's gonna stay on all the time, but you can just dim the light all the way down to zero and it won't be on at that point. So the only time that I will probably use this power cord is when I need, um, I know I'm gonna be using this light for a very long time. Otherwise, I would just use the internal battery for this um, power cord. Next, what you get is this mount. Basically, this will mount on the end of a, a light stand or a light reach pole. As you can see in the video right now, you can mount this, mount it up high. It is adjustable with the little rosette thing in the center. You can have the light going straight you can have the light going straight down, angle, you can move it uh, straight up, move it the opposite way, and then you can lock it in. So this part is to where you put the light at, and then they have a umbrella uh, holder here if you needed to put an umbrella holder. And then this is the part that I would actually put on to my um, light stand right here. So yeah, it's, it's cool that they included this into the package because this matters a bunch. Now, one thing that I did do, I'm not using it on certain things, but I have a Manfrotto clamp and it clamps, uh, it goes into the uh, other mount that I'm gonna show you in just a second. This is going this is going to be the power brick and this is where you're gonna charge the battery up that's inside. This light used to come with two batteries, but they made an update. So the one you get will only have one battery that you have to charge up. It lasts a pretty long time, but then you get a cable here to just plug it into the uh, plug it into the wall. And this is the one that actually charges your battery up so you can have it wirelessly. Next, you get you get this thing right here which this is going to go on the light stand. So basically what you would do is, here is the tripod legs. You will put the tripod legs underneath the bottom, the flat part, and the light will sit and put up against this part right here. So once you put it on, you will put, uh, this will extend out. 
this you get a long piece this piece goes on the back of this edge right here you just screw it in with the uh supplied uh hardware and then you got another clamp that'll come here and you just put that on the top and the light actually just slides right on in and i'll show you that just like so and then it will butt up against that piece right there and then you just turn this over once you butt it up against there see how it fits right there and all you would do is just clamp this down which these clamps are pretty cool you just clamp this down like so and they're very sturdy and now you have a stand that can be on the ground so this is the ground stand the CCT ranges from 2600 Kelvin to 6000 Kelvin, and the green button will fine tune those tones from green to magenta. The HSI tab, you can cycle through 360 colors. There are also an X and a Y function, which I'm still trying to figure that out, but it appears to change the colors in the same manner as the HSI tab. There is also a CCTS, which is an expansion of the CCT that ranges from 1600 Kelvin to 20,000 Kelvin, which is very versatile when you're trying to uh, have creative lighting in a scene. Under the RGBW tab, you can fine tune each color individually. Yes, you can. And that is a plus for this light. There's also a set C function where you can find individual colors quicker without having to adjust from the HSI or the RGBW tab. Additionally, there is a Lee tab, which seem to do something similar to the HSI tab, but it ranges from 002 to 444. It may just be a different variation of mixing colors to create another color. I don't know. I'm still trying to figure that out. I may have to uh, contact soon well. Finally, there is an effects tab and we're going to go into that right now. All right. So in order for you to get the thing upright or facing the way you like to see it, you have to turn the light off and turn it back on and then put it one way. So say, for instance, if I'm looking at the light right here, I want the light. I'm gonna face the light just like this and then turn it on. And then the display screen will be upright to where I need it. But if I wanted it the other way, I would turn it off and then I would turn it this way and turn it back on. Uh, I wish there was a setting to where you could just flip it inside the screen, but it's not. So uh, looking into uh, this um, menu, we have CCT and I'm gonna go through the top one first. We've got CCT, you have HSI, you have X-Y, you have CCTS, you have RGBW, uh, and you have set C. You also have Lee mode, uh, effects mode, memory, menu, and then back to CCT. So you got all these that you can navigate. The menus are very easy. You just got four buttons on the top in order to navigate something. Say for instance, I wanted to change the dim button. I would just hit the M button. It would highlight the dim. If I wanted to go to the color temperature, I would just hit M again and it would scroll over. If I needed to change the green or the magenta, I would just go over one more and I can change that by hitting these two arrows on the left or the right. So if we were going to change this power and boost it up, I would just make sure dim is highlighted and then I would raise it all the way up as needed. And then you just go the opposite way to dim it down. Now the display screen, that's one uh, gripe that I do have. It is not bright here. It is bright inside. You can see it very well, but when you go outside, it's pretty dim. I left the film on here so I wouldn't mess up the screen, but just say for instance, we needed to change our, uh, CCT. As you heard in the beginning of the video, I've already gone over most of these of, of <clears throat> the color temperature, the ranges from CCT, but I'll just go back here right here. It's 2600. And then you can go all the way to 6,000 on the regular one. And the expanded one goes up to 20,000, I believe.
So the HSI is like all the LED lights. You can go all the way up to 360 colors or something like that. So you're you're able to fine tune this light very, very well. And what's cool about this light is it's four foot. So it's going to light up your whole scene. And it is super bright at uh, 100%. I rarely use it at 100% unless you're outside, but there's that. Then X and Y. As I said earlier, I'm not sure what this does, but if we go into your and then you change the X axis um, and you just go all the way back, uh, the colors can change to green, uh, but it just seems that they just change like certain colors. So I'm not very sure on that. Um, then, you know, you got your CCTS, like you, the highest one on here is going to be 20,000 Kelvin. And then um, you can go all the way down to 1600 Kelvin. As I stated uh, earlier on in the video, you have RGBW. You can go through all these different colors. You just tap dim, tap it again, the M, and you can change your red values. You can go and change your green values and change the color. You can change your blue values. This is just really in your white values. You can really customize the way this light will uh light up a scene for you so you have many many options as all the leds and the mt1 will do the same thing they are currently working on the app uh i wasn't able to do bluetooth but this will hook up to dmx as you can see it's got two dmx's in and out here so if you wanted to hook it up to one of those boards or if you wanted to daisy chain uh, another light with DMX so you can have those cool lighting effects that happens in videos you can do that as well you got your set C your set C is you you have your dim and then you have your color which you got 3200k you have 5600k you have red orange yellow green and indigo and blue and purple and that is it so I guess what this is it just gets you to the color quicker if you need a specific color for your scene. So if you need to set a color, there you go. You have it. And then you also have like a, a, a 5600 if that's what you like to shoot at all the time. And then a 3200. So it automatically goes to these um, if you need them to. And then you got your Lee mode, which again, you can dim it down all the way to zero. Everything can go all the way to zero. Um, but on Lee mode, you can go all the way up to 444, which I don't know what it is, but they skip some numbers. They have like different colors, I guess. So you can get to these colors quicker here. They have uh, the actual values. So if I'm correct, then like if we go back to the color wheel, 278 will be it should be around about this color. So let's do that right now to see if that works. So we're going to go to HSI and we're going to turn this down some. And what did I say? Let's go back to the lead. 278. Let's see if that is what that is. 278. So we're going to go all the way to 278. Nope, that's purple. So that does not work. That has nothing to do with it. So I thought that might've had something to do. Ain't nothing wrong with trying. So yep, so you got that, the Lee mode that you can change the different colors. Like I said, I have no idea what this one is, but there you go. Then if we go back, you got your effects panel, which you got 14 different ones. So let's just go through them real quick. I'm gonna dim this down so it's not brining y'all. So you'll just highlight again where you want to be. And we're gonna start at number one cause you can't go back. So it's from one, you got white cycle, you have warm cycle, you have CCT jump, you have CCT cycle, you have HSI cycle, you have HSI jump, you have welding, you have explosion, you have fireworks, you have bad bulb, you have party, fire, paparazzi, TV, cop car, storm, HSI pulse, CCT pulse, HSI flash, CCT flash, and that is it. So you got 20 effect modes on this uh, thing. So if you wanted to go for something that was pretty cool, somebody watching TV or something like that, you got that. And then if we go back, you can, you can change the speed in here. 
You can make it go faster. You can make it go slower. It goes up to 20. You can dim it down. You can brighten it up, so forth. And then you got your memory. So wherever you want to save all your settings, you can save your settings here. If you have particular settings you love to go back to, you have a save one, two, three, four. You can save up to four different presets in here. And then you have your menu where you click on there. You can turn your Wi-Fi on and off. You have your GS, uh, GS, which I have no idea what that is. You have your uh, slave and manual mode that's right here. So you can make this one a slave and you can make the other light as a manual and you can control it with the manual, I mean the main one. And then we're just gonna leave that one a slave. Then you have your DMX where you can change your numbers as I stated earlier and then back. So then we go back to CCT. So that's all the menus inside of this flash. To turn the light on and off, you just hold this button right here down for two seconds soon, and then it'll just go off. When you turn it on, soon will will pop up on the screen. When you are on internal battery, you will see the battery indicator light up here on the top right hand corner. And then if you have your Wi-Fi on, you'll see that Wi-Fi signal. And then right next to it will be a S or an M to tell you if you're slaving this one or if this is the main light, the master light. Um, if you are on uh, AC power, this uh, bar right here will go away. You will not be able to turn it off. That's one of the, another reason why you would know that you're on AC power. And on the AC power, the plug is on the opposite end. This is the DMX end, and then you have the plug on the opposite end. Having a, a larger light versus one of the smaller tubes give me more options when lighting a scene. The only slight improvements that I suggest them making is to make the screen brighter so that it can be seen outdoors and making the tube magnetic. Um, that's one that, well, I understand that the light is really big and it may not be able to be magnetic because of the weight, but it would have been a great plus. Overall, I highly recommend the Soonwell ST50 tube light. It is absolutely amazing and it goes with me everywhere now. Actually, I'm using it right behind me on the HSI tab. I want to say thank you to Soonwell for sponsoring this video and for sending me out this tube to uh, review. If you like this video, this is what I want you to do. I want you to like, comment, and subscribe, and I want you to hit that bell button so you don't never mm -mm, miss another video from me. And I'm going to see y'all in my next video. Peace.